Welcome to 20 Minute Health Talk, where some of the brightest minds in healthcare help us break down the latest news and developments. I'm your host, Rob Hoyle, and today our special guest is Dr. Randy D'Amico. He is the Assistant Professor of Neurosurgery at Lenox Hill Hospital. One of the toughest things during this pandemic was students wanting to do internships. Internships were basically canceled. You figured out a way to do an internship that attracted and brought in thousands of people. Tell us about Brain Turns. Hey, Robert. Thanks so much for having me. Um, Yeah. uh, You know, I think one of the things we thought about when this all first hit was obviously our families and our patients and what we were going to do. But, you know, routinely every year we had a bunch of students that would come in and immediately we started getting emails about kids interested in medicine who were saying, you know, what are we going to do now? Um, Typically, we would come in, we would shadow doctors. All of our doctors are saying we can't come in anymore. Research is something that's, you know, necessary for building a career in medicine, um, as well as just exposing kids to what they could be interested in in the medical field. And so, um, you know, we were fortunate enough that, you know, through Northwell, through the Department of Neurosurgery, it's a pretty tech-savvy department. And we had a lot of opportunity to use things like Microsoft Teams or Zoom or even FaceTime or Playback Health, right, which is, you know, founded by Dave Langer, who's the chair. And basically, it enabled us to go online and bring this virtually to the students instead. Rather than them coming to us, we were able to go to them. And, uh, and so we had this crazy idea of let's make a free online education seminar. Um, we weren't going to be able to, you know, provide, you know, necessarily certificate generating, you know, quality education, but we could give an introduction to students and we could at least give them the opportunity to meet doctors and still be exposed. And also during a pretty unique time, right? I don't think medicine has been the front page of the news uh, for something like this for every day for a year, uh, maybe ever. <laughs> and so um, we had, to, we saw the unique opportunity. We built this platform. We built this webinar. I threw together about 120 lectures or so in about eight weeks time or four weeks time period. And, um, and we brought in students. And like you said, it, it, it attracted thousands of viewers, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. It's so, so uh, it's so amazing to think. And also, so not only thousands of, of, of people participated in this internships, but there was, there was, there were, were students from all over the world. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. So again, what we did was we, we basically set up a zoom account and we said, we're going to, we're going to promote this on social media. And so we went to social media and we said, you know, we have this program, we called it brain turns. And that's what we had called it previously. It was run by John Bookvard, Dave Langer. It was an introduction for students to come in, meet the doctors, get research under their belt and, and learn about neurosurgery and medicine. And so we said, we're going to expand brain turns into the virtual setting. So we took it online. We went to social media and with a little bit of help from the Netflix show, I think, and the newfound kind of fame of, uh, of Dave Langer and John Bookfar, we were able to expand our reach pretty far. Um, and then, shockingly, probably more so than the reach of Netflix was the reach of the individual students sharing it. And so we ended up getting about 16,000 kids enrolled. Um, and really, you know, by it ran all summer. By July, we were at that number. Um, and it was about 70 countries or so worldwide, which is pretty incredible. And um, And... Overall, I think viewership, you know, we had Zoom webinars with 3,000 kids live, right? And it was a, there was a chat feature that could talk to us and interact with the speakers. And, um, and it was solid. I mean, the, the enrollment was solid for the entire summer, which is great. And then we posted everything to YouTube for free, and people in their off time could go and watch it as well, mm-hmm. you know? And so that, I think, is the power of this. We were able to push this out. Uh, to wherever you were, driving in cars with your headphones on, you know, yeah. sitting on the beach, you know, whatever, whatever you were doing, we were there. And so it, it really encompassed, you know, just to explain it a little bit better, Brain Turns was, uh, you know, it was access to all of medicine. It was neurosurgery, without a doubt, because that's what we do. But it was neurology, it was cardiothoracic surgery, it was cardiology. Uh, it was um, special seminars where we invited special guests to come in. Dr. Langer did his own chairman section. We had hospital administration come in and talk about running a hospital. We had our advanced care providers, nurse practitioners, PAs give lectures. And um, it really tried to give, you know, cover the breadth of what medicine was. It tried to be topical with what we were covering. And so we included, without a doubt, things on coronavirus and COVID. Um, but it also just, you know, it was it was something for students to do to, you know, advance their their interests in the field. And I don't see this going away anytime soon. As much as I'd, I'd as much as I'd like to have my mornings back <laughs> sometimes, right. yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's going to keep going. So amazing, and and you know sometimes with internships, it's a tough process to get into an internship to register for an internship. People were signing up through TikTok. 
Yeah. So, yeah. So like I said, we, um, our social media push was pretty aggressive and, and it expanded very, very rapidly. And so at the end of, at the end of brain turns, at the end of the whole thing, we did an exit survey and we looked and we used that to actually publish a paper on the, on the whole experience and about, um, the influence of really social media, but also the demographics of who was involved and who we reached with this. And um, it turned out when you looked at the actual data, TikTok was one of the primary generators of, of kind of referrals to this. Um, the registration process was easy, which definitely helped. I mean, it's a link on a website. You put in your email and you, you're given all the information. We did this really grassroots. So I have a background in, in punk rock music and <laughs> everything was very DIY. And so we actually had a Facebook um, group that we let people sign into and that's how we communicated with them. And it was like guerrilla warfare. You know, it was like dropping communiques in the middle of the night about who was going to be where because we were building a lot of it on the fly. But um, but at the same time, it, it ended up, a, I think, a massive success and the People were very, very interested in it. So, yeah, I think one of the most important things about an internship is to inspire people in the field to want to be involved in the field. And I think what's really fascinating about this too is that we have a shortage of doctors in this country, and also uh, female doctors. And so you had, oh, I think, eighty percent of the people who joined these internships were women. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I mentioned we we recently published the data from this, and we published it in uh, World Neurosurgery, which is one of the neurosurgical journals. And it was actually this month; it's the editor's choice for article, which is fantastic for it. And we looked at the basic demographics of the whole thing, and about eighty percent of the people who enrolled into brain turns were women. Um, and then we basically said, you know, this is this is shocking if you look at the numbers of actual physicians practicing, right? Women in medicine make up somewhere around 30 to 40%. If you look at neurosurgery, it's somewhere about 10%. Um, and so then we looked a little deeper too, and we said, you know, well, well, who are these women um, and, and where are they coming from or who are everyone really involved? And we found out that uh, the majority of them, uh, the majority of students involved were Asian Americans. Um, we had about 15% Hispanics and about uh, somewhere like eight to 10% African American and black. And we found that interesting too, because if you if you break those demographics down, if you look at African American women in neurosurgery, you're talking about like a less than one percent, uh, you know, demographic. And so we started realizing we were onto something. Where maybe we were, maybe this was a great platform to increase uh, access to people who don't typically get access to this. Right? Yeah. It's free. It's online. The internet at this point, while still definitely selecting for a certain demographic or population is accessible. And so um, making it easy and, and I think providing good content was also key, right? We tapped everyone that we knew who was similarly not doing that much at that time, <laughs> at yeah. least in this realm. Sure. And we got them excited. We also were able to go to the medical school, so Zucker School of Medicine, and we, we presented them the option to get involved. And they created an eight-week curriculum as well about how to get into medicine and how to get into medical school and how to you know make your CV look good and ask for letters of recommendation and what a good candidate looks like. And, um, and on top of that, we actually got the medical students to get involved and give, you know, all of our viewers, uh, an option to see what a day in the life of a med student is. Right. And so this was all exposure. It's all access. And so now a kid, you know, maybe in another country or maybe in this country who didn't think he had a chance getting into something medical is given that exposure and sees that it's possible. And, and that's kind of the feedback we got is that, you know, we, we set out this, uh, this mantra of it was inspire, educate and unite. And, um, and, you know, we said that from day one, it was a day of Langer uh, expression. Um, but at the end, all the results we got validated that, uh, and supported everything, you know? So it really, I think from a mission statement, you know, standpoint, it worked. And I think what's so fascinating about it and so awesome about it is like, you humanize it and, and, and let kids and students ask questions and be part of the process. What a great learning experience. I agree with you 100% that humanizing the person who does this is, a, is critical, though, because it gives that, that student, again, who who's doesn't have the access to this, who didn't grow up with it, who doesn't see it, um, who maybe has been you know, underrepresented in this field for so long, a chance to say, like, no, I'm just like that guy. Right. And I think that creates a layer of comfort. And then also this inspiration that, you're, that you mentioned where you feel like you can really do this, you know. And so it, that was what was so helpful about some of the special guests. Too. You know, we brought people.